Hey students, I am super excited about this video. It's the first video in a three-part series about working with the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. This toolkit will allow you to interact with the services in your AWS account directly from the Eclipse IDE. In this video, you'll learn how to install the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse, create an AWS user account with full programmatic access to the objects in your S3 service, and configure the default AWS Toolkit profile. In future videos, I'll take you for a tour of the AWS Explorer pane and demonstrate how you can interact with the AWS environment through Eclipse. Well, I don't want to delay us anymore. AWS and Eclipse integration await us, so let's do this. Before getting started, there are two things that you'll need. An AWS account and the installed Eclipse IDE. I'll leave a link in the description below for my videos on these two topics. I make several references to my video on creating an Amazon free tier account in this video, so it might be a good idea to watch the video before getting started. If you're ready to proceed, let's begin by installing the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. Let's start by visiting the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse webpage. I'll open Chrome, and in the address bar, I'll type aws.amazon.com forward slash Eclipse. I'll press enter on the keyboard and the web page opens. You'll notice to the right I'm given a set of instructions for installing the toolkit. If I scroll down, I'm told that in Eclipse, I need to go to the Help menu and click Install New Software. Next, I would type the URL for this website. I would select the required AWS Core Management tools and any other optional tools. Then I would click Next and be guided through the remaining installation steps. With the site address selected, I'm going to copy this. I'll click the close button and I'll follow the instructions that I was just given. First, I'll open Eclipse. And when I'm prompted to select a directory for the workspace, I'll leave the default and click Launch. When Eclipse opens, I'll maximize the window, and I'll follow the directions that I was given on the Toolkit for Eclipse webpage. I'll go to the Help menu, and I'll select Install New Software. In the Work With text box, I'll paste the website that I copied from the web page. I'll press Ctrl-V on the keyboard to paste, and press Enter. In the box below, I'm provided with a list of components that I can choose to install. If I wanted to see more detail, I could click the arrow to the left of one of the components. For example, the AWS Core Management Tools include tools for working with cloud formation, simple workflow, and the Core Toolkit. I can select the main checkbox to select all of the options, and if I wasn't interested in one of them, I could deselect the option that I wasn't interested in. For our purposes, we're going to select all of the items in the core management tools. I'm also going to select 
all of the deployment tools and the developer tools. For this demonstration, I don't need to use any of the optional tools, so I'll leave those unchecked. With my components selected, I then come down to the next button and I'll click next. In the next window, I'm prompted to review the items that will be installed. This all looks good, so I'll click the Next button again. The next window that appears displays the licensing agreement. I can read through this agreement, and if I'm satisfied with the content, I can accept the terms of the licensing agreement. Realize if you don't accept the terms of the licensing agreement, you will not be able to install the toolkit. I'll click Finish. And in the bottom right corner of my screen, I can see the progress of the software as it's being installed. The installation does take a little bit of time, so I will speed up the video. During the installation process, you might be asked whether you trust the unsigned content of an unknown origin. I'll choose the Select All button, then I'll choose Trust selected. When the installation is complete, I'm prompted to restart Eclipse. I'll click the Restart Now button, and Eclipse restarts. When I restart Eclipse, you'll notice that I'm prompted to configure the toolkit with my access key ID and a secret access key from an AWS account that has programmatic access. If you completed my video on installing an AWS free tier account, you can use the administrator account that we created. Since I like for each one of my videos to be standalone, I'm gonna create a new account and use the access key and secret access key from the new account for the information here. First, I'll minimize Eclipse. I'll open Google Chrome, and I'll go to the AWS website. Next, I'll sign in using the sign in link. I'll select the option for the IAM user and supply the account ID. I'll click Next. I'll type my username. And this is simply the administrative user account that I created in the last video. I'll provide the password. and I'll click Sign In. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna create a user account that has full access to S3. If you remember from our previous discussion, we said you should always use groups, assign permissions to those groups, and then assign users to the groups. Let's start off by creating a user group that has full access to the S3 service. I'll click IAM. Then I'll click User Groups. Let's add a new group, so we'll click Create Group. And in the name of the group, we'll type S3 Full Access. I'll scroll down, and in the Filter Policies by Property text box, I'll type S3. I'll press Enter on the keyboard, and the list is filtered for only policy names that include the letter S and the number 3. The permission that I want to assign is Amazon S3 Full Access. This is the second item, so I'll simply check the box. 
and I'll scroll down and click Create Group. You'll notice at the top of the window, our user group has been created. So next we'll create a user and assign this user to our group. I'll click Users on the left hand side. Then over to the right, I'll click Add Users. In the username box, I'll type Eclipse S3 Full Access. I only want this user account to be able to access AWS programmatically. So I'm only going to select the access key programmatic access checkbox. I'll go to the next permissions button and I'll click next. On the second screen, I'm given the ability to set the permissions. I'm going to provide this user S3 full access permissions. I'll check the box next to this group. And this user will effectively have the Amazon S3 full access control. I'll click next for tags. And here I can assign a key and value pair for this account. I'm going to skip this optional step and click next review. In the review screen, you can see our user has been assigned the username Eclipse S3 full access with programmatic access, and the user has been added to the S3 full access group. We'll click Create User, and we now see our access key and secret access key. This is the information that we've been looking for. We're going to take this information and copy it into our Eclipse dialog box. First, we'll go to the access key, click the copy button. We'll open Eclipse and we'll paste the access key into the access key ID text box. I'll use control V for pasting. I'll return to the AWS web page, and I'll click Show on the secret access key. With the secret access key selected, I can copy this information, and I'll paste it into the Eclipse dialog box as well. I'll go to the secret access key text box, and do Control V again. One thing that I mentioned in a previous video, and I'll mention again, you really need to be careful not to share your access key and secret access key with anyone. By showing you these two pieces of information, you could go to Eclipse right now, create an account with the same access key and secret access key, and you would effectively have full access to the S3 service in my Amazon account. You will be able to add things and delete things at will. Again, for this reason, you really want to make sure that you protect your access key and secret access key. Before I publish this video, I'm obviously going to change this information in order to secure my account. I'll click Next, and I'm asked to help improve AWS's toolkit by enabling analytics data collection. This will be fine with me, so I'll click Finish, and I'll return to the Eclipse window. In Eclipse, you'll notice that we now have the AWS Explorer pane. I can resize this window, and you'll notice many of the popular AWS services are listed here, including Amazon S3. I'm going to wrap up the first video in our series at this point, but we'll talk more about the AWS Explorer in the next video. In this video, we installed the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. We created 
an AWS account with full programmatic access to the objects in the S3 service. And we configured the default profile in the Eclipse IDE. Check out the next video in this series to keep learning about this topic.